ha have you ever heard that um, architecture is frozen music? Or maybe it should be that music is melted architecture. <laughs> close your eyes. Go on, close them. And picture your grandmother's house. Picture what it looks like from the street. Where the front door is. Now go inside. Go to the living room. Think of the color of the walls, the arrangement of the furniture. Now take a deep breath in through your nose. What do you smell? Now just listen for a while. What do you hear? How do you feel? Now open your eyes. You just relived a unique memory from your grandmother's home. It started with an image of what it looks like, but then it started being senses, being sounds and smells. It turned into feelings, into memories. Now look at someone else in the audience. Make eye contact with them. They've just relived their own unique experience as well. Two different houses, two different grandmas, two different experiences, two different ways of being influenced by the architecture around us. Now look at someone else, and someone else, and someone else. We all are influenced by architecture. Now, for years now, I've gone on the Music in the Mountains home tours with my mom. It's kind of a tradition of ours. I've gotten to see a wide variety of different homes, from huge Spanish villas to small old Victorians and everything in between. But I've also gotten to see the vast assortment of reactions people have to these homes. People loving and hating them right next to each other. And this got me thinking about how and why design affects us. When you're in a space, there's a certain amount of interaction that happens, just naturally, between yourself and the elements that make up that space. And these interactions, in turn, define how the space makes us feel. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to turn this into some dry architectural theory lecture. I just want to share some interesting principles of design that have an effect on how we experience architecture. Because whether you feel it or not, architecture is personal, timeless, and everywhere. First, we have to look at space, because space is the medium in which architects work. A photographer may say that a picture, a 2D representation of space, is worth a thousand words. Well, then isn't architecture, the actual 3D space, priceless? Architects determine the size and shape of a space and the connections between different spaces. And this, in turn, defines how we inhabit and move through them. It creates movement and contrast and flow. Would you say that you've had a building touch your heart? Have you ever walked into a building and been absolutely breathless? Then you've experienced architecture in its most beautiful form. When you experience architecture, not only does the space become a part of you, but you become a part of it. And neither yourself nor the space is quite the same afterwards. Space is the starting point for understanding architecture. Next, we look at materials. Because although space is what an architect strives to create and define, materials are the way we do this. Materials are, well, the materials. And each material has its own personality, its own strengths and weaknesses. And by using materials according to their personalities, we create meaningful places. Places that are so real, you just want to reach out and touch them. And come on, we all know we've done this before. Stopped and looked over our shoulder to see if anyone's watching, and then stepped a little closer to touch a piece of furniture or a wall. Just this past week, my house got some new patches of drywall. And little old me was so intrigued by this new texture that I just had to reach out and touch it. Little did I know it was still wet. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> but aside from being intriguing and meaningful, materials reflect context and climate and culture. 
This is the bamboo tree houses in Thailand, the old stone castles in Europe. Materials build and define space, so real you want to reach out and touch it, and ref reflect context and culture. And then my personal favorite, light. Aside from being a wonderful place to take a nap, light reveals color and context and mood. It creates warmth. It tells us the time of day. It connects us to our environment, to the sun, to the solar system, to the universe. We build windows and skylights to capture light, to direct light, to control light. We build solar panels to harness the power in light. Light reveals architecture and connects the often sterile built environment with nature. So when you use these three principles, space, material, and light, artfully, something magical happens. They kind of disappear and float away as life moves in. Naturally, effortlessly, the design just floats. And this is where great architecture is created, when the user is able to let go and just let the design lead them. But the most successful architecture uses these principles without you even noticing. Let's take, for example, Mill Street in downtown Grass Valley. Now I know, and all of my friends know, that whenever I go downtown, or anywhere really, <laughs> I'm often spurred into random one-sided debates of the architecture around me. <laughs> and uh, although most of you don't even notice how it's affecting you, in downtown Grass Valley, we can see the wide width of the sidewalk that allows many people to be walking at once. We can see the rain cover overhead allowing you to shop in any weather. The, the parallel parked cars protecting you from the street the large windows displaying tasty treats or pretty goods. Now I could go on for hours and hours, but I bet that you haven't even noticed how some of the thing, these things affect you. And that's just the point, that the architecture around us merges so seamlessly with our experience of it that we often don't even notice. It's almost like an illusion, like a story, like a play. In theater, in architecture of actors, with the materials of props, in the space of the stage, all with the help of some light, created by the architect or the director, works to make you buy into a story, to make you personally believe that you're experiencing the events they're portraying for you. And when it works, it works. And you're on the edge of your seat, waiting to feel what will happen next. But the moment that something goes wrong, an actor forgets a line, a light burns out, a detail stops acting true, the illusion is broken. Yet the most successful plays, just like the most successful architecture, exists flawlessly for every person, at every time, in every place. Architecture is personal. It creates unique and deeply emotional experiences in us all. Architecture is timeless. It connects us to our past and will propel us into our future. Architecture is everywhere. It's in every place and every detail. It affects each and every one of us so deeply and emotionally that we often don't even notice it. The French architect Le Corbusier once said that you employ stone, wood, and concrete. And with these materials, you build houses and palaces. That is construction. Ingenuity is at work. But suddenly, you touch my heart. You do me good. I am happy, and I say this is beautiful. That is architecture. Thank you. Our house.